For centuries, the idea of power within our global society has been perpetuated, transferred, and grasped at by nations and empires, the political lines of countries and continents have formed the outlines of existence for billions of people. This arrangement provided some modicum of stability, a foundation for individual cultures to flourish, and a framework for economic activity. However, as with any man-made structure, certain elements decay, new pieces are added for support, and eventually, its composition is irreparably changed. While business and trade have been a part of our human consciousness since the first humanoid traded a sharpened rock for a piece of dry wood, in recent decades, industry has exponentially evolved and assumed a much larger role in the daily lives of people across the globe. People used to identify with nations, pledging their allegiance to one king or another, but the broad boundaries of loyalty as a concept have expanded. From birth, we are trained to ally ourselves with groups of like-minded people, whether it is other members of our own hometown, believers in a certain faith, or devoted fans of one musician or artist. Industry is somewhat late to this game, and for many years, the business world was purely a place of commerce, a place where needs were met. As companies swelled in size and began overflowing into other regions, nations, and continents, familiarity created a superficial form of popularity or brand loyalty, but that was primarily based on availability. However, the influence of corporate entities has never stopped growing. As we look around the world today, we see that where loyalty, wealth, and power used to remain firmly and undeniably in the hands of nations and political entities, businesses have gradually reached the same echelon of influence. This is not to say that foreign relations and global politics have become any less important in the progress of the world. They merely have to share the stage to a certain degree with other very important economic and industrial actors. The intermingling of business and politics has become a tangled, indecipherable web that touches, restricts, or drives every country on Earth. In reality, the number of sovereign states is anywhere between 195 and 203, depending on who you ask and what country they're from. However, for all intents and purposes, the number of sovereign nations on the planet should also include the massive political and economic clout of a few dozen corporations that exist and thrive around the world. For example, in 2013, Google reported a net income of approximately 12.92 billion USD. According to the IMF's report of global GDP, gross domestic product, Google is wealthier than 64 sovereign nations. A single corporation, which is less than 20 years old, has managed to develop enough of a loyal following around the globe to outrank roughly one-third of the planet's nations in terms of individual wealth. If you consider Google's net income, which is a more accurate measurement in comparison to GDP, then this search engine titan brings in more money per year than 114 nations of the world. These numbers and comparisons may be staggering, but you must also consider that Google is only a single company out of hundreds of multi-billion dollar corporations. Google isn't the most wealthy, not by a long shot. It doesn't even make it to the top 50 number 52 according to Forbes 2013. The point is, the days of thinking that the world is run by presidents, parliaments, dictatorships, and democracies are over. Although we may not like to admit it, money makes the world go round, and the significance of business and industry are undeniable. Unlike nations, where citizenship presupposes a certain amount of loyalty, the vast majority of global businesses participate in a free market, meaning that people can pick and choose which golden idol they want to worship. Competition is a cornerstone of commerce, which means that companies are desperate to grow, influence, impress, and engage more and more potential customers as possible. Certain companies seem to have found the secrets to success, the magic words that cause millions of people to flock to their doors, wallets in hand. Certain companies have the advantage of supplying a necessary, or perceived as necessary, product, such as oil companies and other energy providers, but the truly visionary companies are those that are not essential in the Maslowian sense of the word. 
The past two decades have seen the astronomical rise of tech companies as the digital age moved from dawn to daylight. Many of the most successful and wealthy tech companies have rather inspiring origin stories, but Google's rise to dominance has been particularly profound and thought-provoking. By largely throwing out the model for successful business practices and reconstructing a strategy for success from scratch, Google has been able to grow faster and more efficiently than most any company or country in history. For that precise reason, millions of hungry, eager eyes look to the company for inspiration on everything from product design to company culture. But on a purely quantitative level, the growth of Google is what fascinates people. This search engine, which at first glance is no different than many of its functionality competitors, has created an empire that spans industries, oceans, and generations. In other words, it's probably worth taking a look under the hood to see what makes this ever-growing, modern-day giant so consistently impressive, innovative, and successful. Dream big, be big. The scale of ambition is one of the most immediately impressive things about Google. Although, to be fair, the concept of a search engine is inherently ambitious, accumulating and organizing the collective, ever-expanding knowledge of the human race is a daunting task for any company. Many people think that Google was the first search engine, but in fact, Google was nearly six years late to that party. Companies like AltaVista, Excite, Yahoo, and Lycos were enabling people to search the World Wide Web long before Larry Page and Sergey Brin brought Google into the arena. However, as they have done time and time again since that fateful step forward, Google went further than any competitor had previously done. They widened their gaze and based their search engine on real-world activity, crawling the web for new content and ranking websites based on relevance, reliability, and user feedback in the form of clicks. Essentially, Google is constantly adapting and changing based on what users want and enjoy. The more than 150 million unique Google searches each day perpetually customize and improve the accuracy of the search engine results. This was the sort of ambitious dream that Google began with, and while their initial version was far simpler than the search engine monster that Google has become nearly two decades later, their original version is what continues to drive them. They clearly operate under a simple mantra, dream big. They don't need to be the first or the flashiest name in a given industry, but when they choose to enter a given market, whether it is in telecommunications, advertising, cloud computing, or anything else, they do it in grand, expansive fashion. Things are deemed impossible because no one has ever done them, but the philosophy of Google argues that everything is possible, but there are some things that haven't been done yet. Officially, Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And they have dutifully held true to that mission since their inception. Instead of improving on what they've already accomplished, Google has always sought to find new areas where they can improve value to their customers and loyal followers. For example, Gmail became the world's largest email service in less than a decade, it was launched in 2004, and now boasts over 500 million active accounts. Rather than simply creating a competitive service and trying to chip away at the market share of other companies with a few shiny new services, Google deconstructed the idea of email and developed a simple, easy-to-use service with far more advanced functionality than anything else on the market. The two most obvious issues with other email providers that held back and frustrated users was storage space and search capabilities. Google offered immediate solutions, providing a gigabyte of storage for users and access to a web search function. Gmail also united all of the other functions of Google, meaning that before the age of app stores, Gmail was the central hub where you could access all of your other Google-related tools, chat, calendar, etc. It wasn't as if these were well-hidden problems that companies were unaware of. These were glaring obstacles that users complained about for years. 
For every problem, there is a solution, and Google has consistently put its bold and presumably impossible solutions into the ring in dramatic fashion, often knocking its opponents out of contention. As business has risen in planetary prominence, so too has advertising, like a strange, symbiotic relationship on a global scale. Within the digital sphere, advertising is now a $40 billion business, and an impressive percentage of that is brought in by Google AdSense. What started as advertisements inserted in Gmail has now grown into the world's largest ad network. It has opened up internet advertising to hundreds of thousands of content publishers who attract customers to tailored website suggestions. It customizes its ads based on user search history, keywords, purchase history, and any number of other freely offered variables. The program has evolved and improved over time right alongside its parent company, remaining flexible, subtle, and successful from day one. Google doesn't simply create something and then let it exist until it becomes obsolete. They continually respond and react to user feedback and behavior to optimize their services and ensure that at the end of the day, they are giving the people what they want. Companies trust AdSense because it is run by Google, the unchallenged king of the internet, and the universal use and availability of Google means that its ads have reached more than 80% of the online world. E-commerce is projected to be a $1.5 trillion sector of the global economy. Many people argue that Google's AdSense, which has connected so many millions of consumers to business through inefficient, non-spam approach, is largely to thank for the massive growth of that economic sector, which barely existed 20 years ago. In terms of what was discussed earlier, this is the sort of global impact that corporations now have, if they have the ambition and the infrastructure to achieve it. Google may have set out to be a search engine, but it has become something far more powerful, a central player in the online world. These examples are only a small sample of Google's unique approach to market entry and innovation. Google Chrome, the Android platform, and even Google Books, 30 million books scanned and counting, all sought to go bigger and better, defying the expectations of failure or futility, and solidifying Google's growth in more and more industries every year. Google is a paradigm of diversification, spreading and growing across the internet, the stock market, and our global society's collective consciousness, but it does so in a way that users welcome, expect, and even demand, which is where the true genius of the company lies. Overcompensate, oversimplify, and overachieve. The maxim of overpromise and overdeliver is not exactly a prophetic revelation. That old adage has been passed around more conference rooms and dusty business school lecture halls than this author cares to count. However, there is a reason that old adages stick around for so many decades. They remain relevant, no matter how times may change. Companies naturally create expectations for their customers. The foundation of advertising and commerce is the creation and achievement of expectations for consumers. When a company develops a reputation for something positive, it is essential to maintain that level of success or approval. The struggle, of course, lies in the constantly changing demands of the consumer public while this dynamism is hardly a new phenomenon, it seems to be speeding up in recent decades. The standards for instant gratification, complete customer satisfaction, and overall return on investment of time, energy, resources, etc. are continually raised because competitors will always be biting at the heels of an industry leader. Everyone wants to knock out the champ. Many people look at search engines, email providers, and telecommunication platforms as largely similar technologies with small pros or cons that may draw users to one or another. In terms of temporary success and a quick buck, any company can bite out a corner of a market for a short while with a single innovation or a particular advancement in one narrow area of functionality. To reach the truly elite levels of success and stay there, consistently thrilling your users and customers is required. 
To accomplish that admirable feat, it's essential to understand another old adage, the devil is in the details. Improving the user experience is another bottom line mantra for Google. They seem to have a number of mantras. If it's possible, then it should be done because when all is said and done, Google users are the most important components. Their feedback, click patterns, purchase frequency, and a dozen other behaviors compromise the data that Google uses to continually improve its services. Just as the one between business and international politics, Google and its users have formed a symbiotic relationship, and Google is perennially dedicated to holding up their end of the deal. The changes and improvements that Google makes over the course of a day, a week, a month, or even a year may be imperceptible to the average user, but that seamless and unwavering delivery of superior functionality ticks an unconscious box in its users. How often does a Google search fail to bring up a result you're happy with? Regardless of how disjointed or unclear your search query is, doesn't Google manage to figure it out? Has it ever taken longer than 0.5 seconds, provided you're on a reliable internet connection? The answer to those questions for 99.99% .99 of people on the planet is a resounding no. Granted, you may occasionally have to readjust your search terms if they are truly off the mark and you want your answer in the top result, but barring any legitimately unrealistic expectations, the Google search engine functions as a mind reader. The search engine itself has evolved its own industry-leading algorithm hundreds of times every year since it was first released. There are a dozen or so major changes each year, but the algorithm is never the same for long. Perpetual growth and improvement is the hallmark of Google search engine dominance. The algorithm has become so advanced that it is basically inseparable from artificial intelligence. It not only learns a user's habits and utilizes search histories to facilitate streamlined results, but it also reads search queries as ideas, not collections of words. It interprets the jumbled search keyword ramblings of college students and CEOs alike, determining what was intended and what is most likely being sought. Many other search engines still spit out results based on individual keywords, meaning that users may have to search dozens of times with increasingly specific or customized search terms to find the answers or results they desire. It's no wonder that Google dominates the search engine arena. High estimates propose that Google handles three-quarters of all online searches. Even with its high-level competitors, those with similar predictive algorithms, Google still stands head and shoulders above them. Google has reported the speeds of the search results page deliver, and while it may not make a tangible difference to individual users, reducing search time from 0.4 seconds to 0.2 seconds makes light years of difference in the grand scheme of the online world. Also, on a very subconscious level, Google argues that any delay in the journey from search to result disrupts productivity and leaves that split second of space for someone to consider another search engine. While that may sound silly to some, given that 0.2 seconds is slightly shorter than the actual blink of an eye, it matters to Google engineers, programmers, and algorithm designers. This overcompensation is what keeps Google ahead of the pack. It literally doesn't allow their users' minds time to think of trying a competing service. A poor user experience can be just as damaging to a company as a poor product or service. Slow generation of a results page might cause users to question Google's reliability, but aggressive or distracting ads can threaten users' interest or preference for Google's overall aesthetic experience. The simplicity of Google is legendary. For many years, their search engine page has remained remarkably stark, empty, and focused on one thing, searching. Although Google has its fingers in the pots of a dozen industries, it also knows when to focus on a single thing. For millions of users, Google's search function is the single most important aspect of their relationship with the company. The search page isn't cluttered with unwanted ads or extraneous messages from the company. The average number of actual words on a Google's homepage is usually less than 40. 
As the famous French poet and designer Jean Cocteau once said, style is a simple way of saying complicated things. Google may not seem like the most stylish company out there, as search engines aren't inherently sexy, but when it comes to doing impressively complicated things in a simple way, no one is better than Bryn and Page's creation. Their perpetual drive to overcompensate, oversimplify, and overachieve is an inspiration to companies around the world. Google continues to grow because it is always one step ahead of the competition. Even when the company does suffer a setback or is faced with a new competitor, they simply work their way back to the top. They keep their promises to their customers while continuing to raise the bar in every industry they enter. Empower your empire. In the past, companies generally had a recognizable shape, a pyramid. Hierarchical systems have been the norm for thousands of years in our society. From political structures and military organizations to corporate entities and monarchies, hierarchies can be seen everywhere. This sort of top-down leadership has evolved over the past century or so, but there are still constructs that inevitably make their way into the vast majority of companies. Even in liberal, open-plan philosophies, there is some level of control or authority, a manager to report to, a creative director, an innovation guide, whatever the company calls it, there is still some vestige of that old hierarchy, perhaps wrapped up in a different title and a different superficial structure. Companies so often purport themselves to be innovative or to be using a new type of management structure that enables more productivity and individual ambition. But there are many businesses that try to lure talent with false freedom and are still restrictive, competitive, cannibalistic, and ultimately racked by the same problems as old school hierarchies. Google, as has already been discussed in earlier sections, is a company that backs up its promises, and that doesn't only apply to its customers. Employees are the key variable that makes Google a success, so every effort is made to liberate their creativity, utilize their potential, and empower them to new heights for the benefit of the company and the world at large. The hiring process of Google is one of the most intense in the business, and with approximately 1,500 applications coming into Google's mailbox every day, they have the cream of the global crop to choose from. However, Google's hiring practices aren't directed at a single ideal candidate. Google understands that to achieve global coverage and dominance in their various industries, they need a diverse group of engineers and innovators that will think in different ways, identify problems that others might miss, and find solutions from new directions. Having a wide pool of talent and specialization means that establishing a formal work structure, reporting structure, or hierarchical oversight would be foolish and unproductive. Instead, Google empowers their employees to be their own managers, removing an entire level of the traditional hierarchy and simply allowing groups of workers to form project teams with rotating leadership positions based on personal specialty or experience with a given subject. Collaboration is king. Most of these teams are groups of three engineers who have full control over their own projects. When they identify problems, they take necessary steps to fix it, even if the issue is with a product or service that has been previously launched. Google spends nearly 100 Google hours training and preparing each of their employees who have already proven themselves to be some of the brightest, most innovative, and exceptional minds in the field. Some are academic stars of the world's finest universities, while others are dark horse startup geniuses who never applied to college. Google doesn't care where their employees come from, they care about what each team member brings to the table. After investing so much time in choosing and preparing their employees, Google places a high level of trust in their decision-making capabilities. Furthermore, the transparency between departments and the information sharing of the company's executive leadership makes every employee a knowledgeable, essential, and respected part of the company. Their fundamental function for millions of people around the world is to share information faster and in more efficient ways. 
it would be rather hypocritical if they didn't design their internal communication network with a similar goal in mind. The content of quarterly board meetings are shared with Google's more than 25,000 employees, and they are shown the exact same things as the shareholders and executives. Google doesn't need to hide anything. Open communication and honest discussion of ideas, plans, projects, and new ventures is something Google promotes, not actively prevents. For that reason, they believe that their employees should understand just as much about the vision and the direction of the company as the executive team. After all, the engineers, designers, and innovators are the ones doing the legwork to turn major company ambitions into reality. Beyond these project teams that run and monitor themselves, Google is also a big fan of blue sky thinking, pursuing new, occasionally outlandish ideas and seeing how far they can go. Progress is not about playing it safe, and that implicit trust that Google places in its thousands of employees allows them to pursue their own projects with 20% time. This program has become a widely admired and emulated system that essentially gives employees one free day per week to work on whatever new projects or dreams they want. Google's revolutionary driverless cars, which have logged over 750,000 miles without an accident in these early testing stages of this fascinating new technology. This was a pet project of some of the engineers out in Palo Alto that has put Google into one of the most exciting and potentially lucrative industries in the coming decades. Without the flexibility and empowerment of those employees, Google wouldn't have nearly as many projects in the works or even on the cutting room floor. Sergey Brin's breakdown of focus is 70% search and advertising, 20% in strong potential products, and 10% in new innovations. This simple division of attention and resources within the company hasn't changed much in recent years, and it provides the foundation for continuous capital flow and an attractive environment that draws top talent from numerous relevant fields. By granting employees freedom to explore their own ideas, providing all of the necessary information for their assigned tasks, and constantly seeking out new data and customer feedback to improve innovations to the user experience, Google has essentially deconstructed the corporate hierarchy and made every employee a potential leader. As someone's idea grows, their position within the company does too. However, while this may lead to detrimental competition in other companies, employees of Google are a special, collaborative breed. They are devout believers in Google's mission, obsessed with improvement, and intensely devoted to innovation more so than personal gain or glory. Google is able to sustain their growth because every piece of their complex corporate puzzle can be impactful. There is no telling where the next spark of brilliance may occur, nor what interesting new fires it will start. Maintaining this balance of leadership, creative vision, and perpetually motivated employees means that the company is truly greater than the sum of its parts because it has some of the most unique and empowered parts in the business. Pick your battles. Choose your allies. When it comes to dominance of the digital sphere, Google does not completely stand alone. Yes, certain products and services of the company lead their respective sphere and have done so for many years, but there are other newer ventures where Google has taken hits and had to go into the proverbial trenches with other tech giants like Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. Google is so comprehensive and widespread in its activities that it often faces competition from numerous industry challengers at once, something that niche companies or more one-directional organizations don't struggle with. Competing for attention and traffic is something that every company deals with, but Google has to handle advertising, social media platforms, telecommunications, software, hardware, app platforms, and every other industry that they're delving into. No matter how big, ambitious, or wealthy Google becomes, it can't field every battle with competitors. A wise company knows how to be patient, learn from the mistakes of others, and offer something legitimately competitive or advanced when you do enter the market with a new product or service. 
When a company has many facets and interconnected parts, it can be difficult to choose where to push and where to hold back. But again, the data collection strategies and perpetual development on every platform and product pushes them in the right direction. The tech industry has been in a complex arms race for over a decade, and it has only become more intense since the advent of laptops, smartphones, tablets, and phablets, and will likely grow more urgent and competitive with whatever comes next. As seems to be its style, Google entered a number of markets slightly behind Apple, and while Steve Jobs' visionary corporation received much of the glory, Google quietly climbed into contention with oftentimes more streamlined, less expensive, and more functional options for markets like smartphones and tablets. Instead of going head-to-head -head with Apple's loyal following, Google added something that Apple couldn't and acquired the Android platform, which greatly increased the functionality and convenience of all their products for loyal Google users. In a sense, Google changed the battlefield and didn't make it about who could make a sleeker smartphone or a sexier package design. They were far more concerned with what the actual usage patterns of the products were going to be. They tailored their rebuttal products and platforms to more accurately predict their customers' needs, and this consideration won them a significant portion of the market. This discerning nature of when to rise to a battle is coupled with extremely wise acquisitions, even in seemingly unrelated or random industries. When a company is large enough, it has the economic wiggle room to make large acquisitions when a program or company is just coming into fruition, even if the viability is unknown or widespread proof of value doesn't exist. Google purchased YouTube, AdMob, Motorola Mobility, Applied Semantics, and even Nest, a smoke detector and thermostat company. Many of these billion-dollar purchases seemed unrelated to Google at the time, but as different elements of the tech world become more and more interconnected, there is no telling what puzzle pieces companies might be looking to find. Regarding that final acquisition, Nest Labs, made by Google in early 2014 for a cool $3.2 million, Larry Page, CEO of Google, didn't justify in terms of what company they were getting, but rather what people they were welcoming into the Google family. Google has picked its partners remarkably well, and company acquisitions are more like job applications on a much larger scale. The team at Nest Labs, some of whom began their careers of innovation at Apple Inc., effectively became Google team members when Nest Labs was acquired. Visionary design and creativity are rarely applicable to a single industry, and by spreading the acquired talent throughout the company, Google is strengthening its entire infrastructure with each subsequent purchase. Since 2010, Google has purchased an average of one company per week, ranging from a few million dollars to over $12.5 billion. This is their other way of avoiding future head-to-head -head competitions with major industry players, simply buy them first. Google founders never forgot that they were just two guys in a garage in the early days of their empire, and they are not arrogant enough to think that the next generation won't produce similar success stories. The executive team at Google carefully monitors developments in the business world and buttresses itself against future pressure by giving many of those companies a golden ticket, being affiliated, owned, and protected by the undisputed king of the internet. Google knows that competition is healthy, but it also can be distracting, disruptive, and detrimental to a company's bottom line. By turning potential enemies into allies and using smaller, innovative companies as veritable incubators of great talent, they skip some of the slow drudgery of seeking out and shaping top employees. It's a win-win situation for everyone involved, and Google continues to lure the best minds that the world has to offer. Explore. Engage. Experiment. There are certain tech companies that put a lot of stock in flash and panache. They spend excessive amounts of time and energy creating a mystique or an exclusivity to their products that is inherently attractive. The legendary secrecy and meticulous attention to detail of Apple Inc. comes to mind immediately.
Steve Jobs was famous for finding and eliminating every possible mistake or obsolete element of his products, obsessively dedicated to perfection. When he revealed the content of his company's brilliance, he wanted it to be in full, workable condition with every possible question answered and contingency considered. Apple also values its privacy above all other things. Leaks and unwanted revelations of what's coming next have always been a problem for that company. Google has found success in a much different way, integrating its users into the developmental process as much as possible and finding errors based on real user experience and feedback rather than brainstorming every possible issue in corporate think tanks. One of Google's many philosophies is to see the world as their laboratory. If their services are meant to exist and flourish in the real world, then that is where the ideas should be tested, stressed, explored, and improved. Google doesn't believe in barring the doors to anyone without an employee keycard. In fact, they welcome anyone to add, utilize, and even code programs using their core processing infrastructure. That may sound like madness for any company to allow the average person to get close to their intellectual property, Apple's worst nightmare, and yet Google operates under the assumption that with the proper regulations in place, they shouldn't restrict their platform to Google-designed and inspired functions. Despite Google's exhaustive efforts to find top talent, there will always be prodigies and lightbulb moments that Google wants to be a part of. By allowing users to piggyback on much of their functionality, Google is far more likely to already be implemented on the ground floor of new projects of which they were not even aware. For example, Google Earth was a pioneering step forward for public GPS technologies and gave us a new way to look at our world. If Google had closed that technology and not allowed it to be implemented in new and ever more informative ways, then what good is creating such a brilliant technology? Amateur computer programmers and hackers alike can reappropriate Google's basic platforms and use them in new ways, such as mapping the potential impact of increased sea levels from global warming, or even as a tool for disaster response, environmental protection, and awareness raising of threats from urban sprawl. These were not projects conducted or released by Google. They simply released their fundamental technology and allowed the world to play, explore, and evolve their ideas into even greater achievements. Google has turned millions of users into a global development team that works far beyond the bounds of Google Earth. Their mobile platform, Android, has inspired millions of would-be developers around the globe to design their apps and products with Google in mind. There are over 1.3 million apps developed for the Android platform by outside developers using Google's platform as a foundation and utilizing the company's welcome support and resources to do so. Developers work in a sandbox, meaning that they have limited access to a specific area of the system unless they receive express consent and security clearance to dive deeper into Google's coding, so the tech giant's core system remains well protected. Hundreds of different products are now also designed to be compatible with Android, so the dependence on Google grows every day and the ideas continue to flow from the best source of free ingenuity on the planet creative users. Between Google's Developer's Kit and the Android SDK, Software Developer Kit, the company is making it easier than ever to become an active part of the community, and that inclusiveness spurs growth, interest, and loyalty that other companies have to achieve through fewer avenues, such as great customer service or superior products. Google is welcoming a universally accessible and increasingly compatible way of accessing online content, maintaining connectivity between all of your devices, and contributing your own ideas to the world. Google counts on this interactivity and user contribution to grow in an inexpensive and user-friendly way without taking on the responsibility of designing hundreds of thousands of individual programs. Google has been criticized in the past for its unique approach to beta testing, which is quite different than the heavily guarded tradition of beta testing for most companies that produce intellectual property.
Google, however, often rolls out unfinished or nearly finished products to large groups of users and asks them to report back on functionality bugs. Sometimes these are early releases of products about to be opened up to the general public, while other times they are apps, programs, or updates from Google for which they want immediate feedback. While this form of crowdsourced beta testing makes some companies take a step back, Google stands behind the trial and error nature of their strategy. When the tangible and intangible barriers between a company and its customers are eliminated, it promotes immediate growth by instantly attracting a new base of users, supporters, creators, developers, and aspiring partners to your brand. Keeping all of your secrets locked in an ivory tower may increase the buzz and mystery around your company, but it won't necessarily establish long-term loyalty or guarantee growth. That is where Google has excelled in recent years and where it will likely continue succeeding into the future. Journeys are perfect, not destinations. To remain at the top of anything, be it a local market, a niche field, or a globe-spanning industry, requires some level of understanding and acceptance that failure is inevitable. No matter how perfectly coded or designed something may be, it is essential to remember that mistakes will always arise, there will always be ghosts in the machine. Google is perhaps the greatest success story of our times, but that doesn't mean they don't make mistakes, and big ones, from time to time. Have you ever heard of Google Lively or Dodgeball, which was purchased at the same time as Android? What about Google Buzz? Obviously, things like Gmail, Google+, Android, and Google Maps are part of our collective consciousness because they are widely used and loved but there are probably more failures under Google's belt than home run successes. This is because Google works in uncharted territory, as mentioned. Google looks for the empty spaces in the market, filling the needs of people before they even realize they need something. This is an inherently unpredictable process, and sometimes real-world rollouts don't go nearly as well as the designers at Google expected. This is particularly the reason for the unique approach to beta testing discussed earlier, but it is also a foundational aspect of the company as a whole. The company may bring in revenue and new users through their successes, but many of those revolutionary ideas and services have earlier failures to thank for even existing. Fail often, but fail early and fail wisely. Google may be bold and ambitious, but it is far from foolish. They carefully monitor their larger ventures, and when a certain threshold of invested time and resources have been crossed, they ask themselves serious questions about the reality of this new idea ever seeing the light of day. The company doesn't pour endless amounts of money into projects that continue to stumble. They pause, readjust, and either scrap the project or transform it into something else. However, it is important to fail early, before the venture becomes a real black eye, both to the public and Google's wallet. Speaking of Google Wallet, that PayPal-like service was one of the company's most notable failures. Failing wisely is really where Google excels, and many of its now-forgotten projects were re-engineered and rebranded into something we recognize and love today. For example, Google Buzz is seen by many industry professionals as a rough evolutionary step towards Google+, which now has approximately 400 million active users. Making mistakes is never a bad thing, as any good entrepreneur or business professional will tell you, provided that something can be learned or taken away from the failure. This ability to bounce back from failures and use those traditional low points as fodder for future greatness is one of Google's greatest strengths. If a company allows setbacks to discourage future risk-taking, they should probably just close their doors and cut their losses because all progress requires risk. Google is actively trying, and succeeding in many cases, to change the world, and that change is not always going to come without a fight. Take Google Glass, for example, a potentially revolutionary new technology that has seemingly limitless applications. 
However, interest in Google Glass has waned, and what was potentially going to be the next revolutionary step forward in personal computing and telecommunications has largely stalled. This is obviously disappointed for the search giant, but at the same time, their ambitious project has started the ball rolling into the next generation. The avid supporters of the technology, as well as its vocal critics, popularized the idea to millions of people, if not the product itself. I have no doubt that owning a Google Glass-inspired product will become the new normal within the next decade, and much of its success will hinge on eliminating the inadequacies of its ancestral product and improving the marketing approach. Failures are too often seen as write-offs, things to move past and forget. But the cutting room floor of the world's top companies are littered with brilliance, perhaps developed too early, not approached properly, or not fully pursued to their natural end. For every Gmail, there is a search wiki, and Google wants to keep it that way. As a search engine, Google understands that nothing is perfect. An algorithm will never exist that produces the precisely desired result for every search. Imperfection is unavoidable. The pursuit of perfection, therefore, is never-ending. They encourage their employees to pursue their own ideas, make their own mistakes, and apply the knowledge gained to the next shot in the dark. When 25,000 people start dreaming, a lot of unicorns and impossible visions come to the surface, and these often fail. However, when 25,000 people start dreaming, truly amazing things can also be discovered. Google counts on failures to grow their business just as much as their successes because failures form the foundation for their future. Essentially, you have no way of knowing what works unless you also know what doesn't. I'm feeling lucky. This search engine turned global game changer understands that for every empire that rises, another falls. As they continue to grow in more unpredictable and life-altering ways, other companies will either find a way to compete or bow out. Larry Page and Sergey Brin haven't forgotten their roots, however, and know that somewhere in the world, future innovators are pouring their morning coffee, dreaming of the next big thing, or even playing with their parents' tablet. The leadership and loyal ranks of Google represent one of the most concentrated groups of intellectual talent and creative energy in the world, but they never discount the element of luck. They were lucky to have reached such great heights. Countless things could have tripped them up in the past, and as their project became bolder and more high stakes, they could still trip up in the future. That is why the company remains so firm in its vision, so passionate in its development, and so active in dozens of industries around the world. Google isn't ready to get comfortable and rest on its laurels, of which there are many. Like a search engine shark, it must either move forward or die. That being said, given the growth factors that Google demonstrates in everything they do, from customer interaction to hiring practices, they show no signs of stopping or reaching a point of obsolescence for many years to come. Google has become a part of our lives, a go-to when we're stumped about anything, and a reliable provider of more novelties and services than we even realize. It has not only grown in size, but also in significance, and that is where the long-lasting value lies. If Google disappeared from the world today, competitors would rise to fill those market gaps, many of which Google created and filled simultaneously, but it would never be the same. Just as a country can't be wiped off the map, neither can Google. Branding wars can be fought, digital arms races can escalate, but the impact of a company that injects itself so comprehensively and beneficially into global culture can never be erased. As long as the company continues to protect its borders, while still expanding into the uncharted future, then it will continue to be an essential part of our global conscious. If you don't believe me, just Google it.